Mitra, the helper of the sun, protector of covenants, and enemy of liars and oath-breakers in Persian beliefs. But when he crossed the borders of Persia, Mitra gained followers of mysticism who sought refuge in underground sanctuaries, with a statue depicting him in the act of sacrifice, a depiction that links Mitra to mystical beliefs about the constellation Orion. Previously, we discussed mystical beliefs related to the constellation Orion and how it was the most well-known among ancient civilizations. From Native Americans to Europe, Mesopotamia, Persia and India, there were mystical beliefs about this group of celestial bodies. Even today, the Zulu people, a group of indigenous Africans, consider themselves descendants of people who came to Earth from a star in the Orion constellation in ancient times. Part of a text found in the Egyptian pyramids indicates that the ancient Egyptians believed their gods came to Earth from the stars of Orion's belt, and also from Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. And indeed, in their beliefs, Osiris, the great god who became the king of the afterlife, was associated with Orion, and his sister wife Isis, with the star Sirius. In some interpretations, the three famous pyramids of Egypt are also aligned with Orion's belt. You can also find discussions about the theory that part of the Orion Nebula reflects a mirror image of the Nile Delta and serves as evidence for the mystical belief of as above, so below. This belief has led to theorising about a galactic-scale matrix controlled by entities called Archons, with celestial bodies being part of a hologram used to control the conditions of human life on Earth. This is why changes in their positions in the sky affect human life and even behaviours and attitudes. Regarding the Orion, you can find him as a demigod and a skilled hunter in ancient times whom the Greek goddess Artemis fell in love with. However, through a series of events, he was killed and Artemis, to see him every night, turned him into a constellation in the sky. In one of the myths, Orion encounters the seven nymphs who were companions of Artemis and falls in love with one of them. He pursues them, and the seven sisters pray for salvation from Orion and are transformed into doves. Later, Zeus places them in the sky as the Pleiades. Yet, if you find their position in the night sky relative to Orion, it appears that he is still chasing them in the sky. In one story, Artemis becomes angry because Orion attempted to seduce her servants and eventually, a dangerous scorpion is sent to kill Orion. Considering the interpretations of the ancient inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Orion could be linked to the mythological Gilgamesh, who was also a demigod. In one of the mythological tales, the goddess Inanna falls in love with him. But when her advances fail, she goes to Anu, the supreme god, and asks him to send the celestial bull to kill Gilgamesh. However, in the final battle, the hero with the help of his companion Enkidu manages to kill the celestial bull. This part of the story is interpreted as the confrontation between the constellation Orion and the constellation Taurus in the sky. And if you remember this depiction of Mitra, you can probably guess that part of the discussions about this ancient deity relates to the constellation Orion and his battle with Taurus in the sky. In most depictions, alongside Mitra and the wounded bull, you can find a dog, a snake, a scorpion, and a raven. Sometimes a lion is also present with a vessel in the scene, and two deities with torches stand beside them. Cautes holds the torch upwards, and Cautopates holds it downwards. In this book, you can find the most detailed discussions about the connection between Mitra and the constellations in the sky. The author considers Mitra to be the same as the mythical hunter Orion, and believes that this scene could have been observed in the night sky at one time. One of the foundations of his argument is based on an article this man presented at a conference in Iran, in 1975, with the theory that the constellation Taurus is related to the sacrifice of the bull in Mithraic beliefs. 
meaning that the symbols and signs in this depiction are related to the constellations that appear in the night sky at the cosmic death of the constellation Taurus. This cosmic death occurs when the sun rises, and this constellation sets in the west, and at that time we have some constellations appear. For example, the dog represents the constellation Canis Major, of which the star Sirius is a part. Similarly, the scorpion, snake, lion, and even the raven and cup in this depiction all represent their respective constellations in the night sky. Eventually, we have the argument that the killing of the bull by Mitra symbolises the death of the constellation Taurus, coinciding with the first rays of sunlight marking the beginning of the day. This combination of constellations was based on the observations of people living in the Roman area between 300 BC and 400 AD. However, in more recent discussions, it is assessed that Mitra has an astral identity and is the same as Orion, the great hunter in Greek mythology. Notably, in Mitra's birth narrative, he meets and forms a pact with the sun god, similar to Orion in Greek mythology, who meets Helios. This man's theory also suggests that the two torchbearers in the depictions of Mitra represent the stars Aldebaran in the constellation Taurus and Antares in the constellation Scorpius. In examining similar discussions, we have the myths of the Mesopotamian people about the mythical Nimrod. The king of Babylon claimed to be a god, and it is suggested that his name comes from this phrase meaning shining light, connecting him to the god of light and the sun. Nimrod is also depicted in ancient writings with the symbol of Orion or the constellation of the hunter. He ruled Babylon for 400 years until one day an angel appeared to him and asked him to repent. However, Nimrod declared himself the sole ruler of this world and challenged the god of the angel to a battle. He requested three days to prepare for the battle, during which he amassed a vast army. However, suddenly, a swarm of gnats attacked him. One gnat entered Nimrod's nose, reached his brain and began gnawing at it. He endured the pain of the gnat in his skull for 40 years until he finally died. Similarly, in one of the mythical narratives, Orion dies after displaying excessive pride and being stung by a scorpion sent by the gods. Following all these discussions, we arrive at a series of theories about the presence of extraterrestrials in ancient times on Earth who came from one of the stars in the constellation Orion. Previously, in examining the ancient beliefs of the Zulus, we talked about how long before advanced observatories and telescopes captured images of the constellation Orion, the native Zulu people had incredible details about the shape and composition of the stars in this constellation, passed down from their ancestors. Their ancestors' source was people who came from the sky and settled among the Zulu. The constellation Orion is also present in the beliefs of the Hopi people, Previously, we discussed their beliefs in gods who came from the sky and met with their ancestors. For centuries and several generations, Hopis were semi-nomadic, settling in one place, building their villages, and then moving on to find a new place to live. Until they eventually settled in an area of northern Arizona. According to this book, the twelve villages they built in this area were positioned according to the constellation Orion. The reason was the instructions of a god named Masao. The Hopi leaders, believing they were following Masao's orders, identified this place as the centre of the world and believed that by building structures that together formed the shape of the constellation Orion, they could communicate with the gods. In most of these narratives, the constellation Orion is connected to gods and deities associated with light who act against the traditional gods ruling the earth. This interpretation closely resembles the narrative of the battle between light and darkness in the world of Mani, where messengers and representatives from the world of light come to fight against the forces of darkness ruling the earth. We will discuss this topic further in upcoming videos. If you are interested in these stories, subscribe and like this video to support us on this journey.